The 20th century has been a century of wars and revolutions, not the least of which has been the woman's revolution. In these final years to the countdown to the new millennium, why, suddenly, is the oldest tradition in art resurrecting in an international art movement? And why is it having massive influence on contemporary culture? My name is Star Goody. During the last four years, I've talked with artists who work in the Gaia, our earth goddess tradition, and scholars who have discovered the beginnings of human spirituality and creativity. Welcome to the Goddess in Art. My guest this evening is Maureen Murdoch. She's an artist, a therapist, and an educator, and she's the author of the book Spinning Inward. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you, Star. It's a pleasure to be here. Likewise, I'm so happy to have you here. Maureen, in, in looking at your work, uh, I was just thinking of you as an artist. You have, um, you're a photographer. You photograph the goddess as you find her in contemporary women and also out in nature. And also as an educator, you have a deep feeling for children, which I found very moving. And you've traveled all throughout the United States and Canada teaching multi-sensory learning and using um, guided imagery and meditations and other techniques to help children learn in a more whole way. And also as a therapist the last 10 years, you've worked with incest survivors, people with cancer and AIDS. And when I think of your work, I think of you as an artist and a healer. And to me, that healing has to do, all of your work has to do with healing the feminine wound, that all of us in this culture have this wound because this culture denies or denigrates the feminine. And I was wondering how you connect the current reemergence of the feminine or the return of the goddess with your work. <clears throat> well, I guess I see people in our culture very much out of balance mm. at this time. And... Um, one of the things I've noticed in working with people uh, with their dreams and uh, looking at other people's images that the, is that there's the woman, the, the feminine, large women are coming into people's dreams and uh, you see them in a lot of people's artwork and you, and you see the connection for children with nature, you see their um, despair over things like the uh, the oil spill in Alaska and uh, in fact they're doing grieving groups up in Alaska right now because mm. the children are feeling such pain because these creatures have are being killed and I, I, I do feel that as a society we've we've been out of balance for a long time and and that's why the goddess is re-emerging uh, we need the feminine energy uh, all throughout our lives Yes, and, and again, it's that healing thing. And one thing I wanted to show is, is your book, and this is called Spinning Inward. Maybe you could read the subtitle. Okay. <laughs> Spinning Inward Using Guided Imagery with Children for Learning, Creativity, and relax, Relaxation. And this is published by Shambhala Books. And I found, like in reading this book and myself as an artist, very encouraged by it because it was about getting in touch with those things inside that have been denied in this culture and, you know, the artists within. And it's not only you know, working with children or, you know, and your clients, but with artists too and reconnecting mm -hmm. people with their creativity and what the missing values of this culture have been. Oh, definitely. And art schools really don't talk about that. Um, it's really a person has to find that within themselves. And, and we don't have a lot of um, support in our culture for that. So we have to find other ways of connecting with spirit. One of the ways that I connect with spirit is in nature and in working with children and very much in writing and just walking along the beach and feeling that connection to Mother Sea. That's how I see the sea. One thing, too, that I find fascinating about your work is it's really about now and bringing it down into our daily lives. I mean, um, you have in the current Women of Power issue, um, one of the books that you've been working on is 
changing women, uh, contemporary faces of the goddess, and you, you've uh, interviewed a lot of women who you see that the goddess manifests in their life, and of course as an artist, as a photographer, you've mm-hmm. been photographing them, and also it's going to be coming out in the September Women of Power, so look for Maureen's work. And I was just wanted you to talk a bit about that project. M- what made you want to just really focus on it now? Well, it started in 1986. I was um, going to present uh, a workshop on the heroine's journey at uh, Cal State Long Beach's conference, uh, Return of Woman Spirit. And the uh, presenters were gathered at a meeting, and we were talking about what our focus was in terms of the feminine, in terms of the goddess. And Gloria Ornstein, who's a uh, feminist scholar and educator, said, when I'm living my life in service of the goddess, then everything works. And when I'm not, I feel totally out of sync. And I thought about that statement, and I realized that that was true for a lot of the women that I knew who were starting to reclaim goddess images and goddess symbols and ancient uh, feminine symbology in their lives. And so I started to talk to women. And I I started out actually with Gloria saying, um, you know, what is, what's the goddess for you? What is the essence of the goddess? Is it a female deity or is it an energy? Hmm. You know, how does it speak to you? And uh, how does it influence your life? And what in your childhood or your girlhood or your early um, adulthood brought you to the goddess? Because the goddess hasn't been spoken of much before the last 10 years. And why do you see the rise of uh, consciousness about the goddess right now in our culture? And it was fascinating. Um, I've interviewed uh, artists. I've interviewed a nurse midwife, uh, business people, um, psychologists. And all of them say basically the same thing. We need that feminine energy. We need the balance. We need to honor the interconnection of all species. And the feminine has been so denigrated in our culture and other cultures for centuries that Uh, Women are very much, and men, are bringing it alive uh, in the world today. And so I have interviewed now about 35 women and taken their photographs. So this particular project, Changing Women, Contemporary Faces of the Goddess, is a book um, showing their portraits. And I've taken their interviews and then called that down to a one-page statement. So it's from 13 pages of interview to a one-page statement. Interviewing's a lot of work. Yes, it is. Right? It is. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Part of what you're saying is so fascinating to me because you can call the energy whatever you want. I mean, masculine, feminine, or whatever. But there are energies that are missing from this culture, mm-hmm. like nurturing, um, you know, nurturing ourselves. Uh, see, like you said, seeing all of life, being connected, and it, it isn't like a will, an act of will, you're going to go do this, but it's an alignment of this greater web of life, and mm-hmm. I, that's what I find like um, really intriguing about your work, and I'd like to show our audience some of these um, okay. pieces of work, so let's see some of these uh, faces of contemporary goddesses. This is Arisika Razak, she's the uh, nurse midwife I mentioned before, and she created something called the vulva dance to honor the sacredness of the vulva. She works with poor women, mostly up in Oakland and Alameda County, and she lets them know that they have a choice uh, about their sexuality. This is also a picture of her. This is how she starts her um, dance, completely veiled and clothed. And the uh, hand symbol there is the symbol of the yoni or of the vulva. And one thing I find fascinating about your work is you use all natural light, even Mm -hmm. even in indoors, and I think that's very intriguing. Well, it's, uh, it's the way that I prefer to work. This is Colleen Kelly, who's a ritualist and an artist from New Mexico, and she takes people on um, pilgrimage and tries to get people to make their vacations sacred oh. so that they can reconnect to their sacred connection with the earth. This is called The Return of Quetzalcoatl as a Woman. It's a blue hummingbird woman. Oh. And you can see she brings in the symbol of the snake. This is Valerie Bechtel, also an artist from New Mexico, and she works with uh, spirit vessels and spirit shields. That piece in front of her is a spirit vessel. And she says that we are all a vessel. And we all contain spirit. And she's working very much with the crone in her work because she feels that we have to honor particularly elderly women who are not honored in our culture. Yes, women are okay as virgins and mothers, but the crone forget it. <laughs> right, right. And this is a wonderful crone. This is Buffy Johnson, who's in her late 70s and an artist from New York. 
and she just wrote Our Lady of the Beasts, a book that she's been working on for 35 years. Mm. She's a real inspiration. Yeah, it's a beautiful book, the way it's laid out and looking at all the different relationships of women to animals. Right, and this is Patrice Wynn, the author of Woman's Spirit Resource Book and also the founder of the Gaia Bookstore up in Berkeley. And she's a woman that's really bringing the sacred into commerce. She says we've got to allow women to honor the feminine through their business. Mm. This is Flor Fernandez, who's a uh, psychotherapist, a woman from Cuba, and she brings her work into the barrio. She's worked with gang members to reconnect with their feminine through murals of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And the background there is? Um, that is a, uh, actually a, a mural or a um, tapestry that she has in her home. Mm. This is Anna Homler in her um, performance piece of LMNOP, her character that she says is elemental. <laughs> and you've heard uh, Anna's music on this show quite often when she sings Karu Karu, which you'll be hearing later on in the show when we show you more slides. Yes, Anna was one of my first guests, and her music, which she feels just really comes up out of her body, uh, seemed to fit so perfectly with this show and what it's all about. Yes, well, she, she is very elemental in the way that she describes her connection with the goddess, and lots of people talk about that in terms of their connection with the earth. Many women, when I was interviewing them and, and said, you know, where do you find the goddess? And they'll say, well, I find her when I'm digging in the earth, oh. or I find her when I'm swimming in the sea. Or in Anna's case, listening to the sounds of her own body, because I feel that's a lot of it too, is re-honoring yeah. the body and the female body. And you had mentioned earlier that you're working on a book that, again, is going to be published by Shambhala Publications, so they should look for that, called um, The Heroine's Journey, Reclaiming Personal Myth. Mm -hmm. And I think this is such a needed work, and I, I find that very interesting, because I know that um, you taught the hero's journey um, by its, its uh, best delineated by the late Joseph Campbell, whom you worked with and you knew. Mm -hmm. And you asked him once, uh, what about women going on this hero's journey? And he said, well, you know, women didn't need to go on a journey because they're where it's at and that's where everybody's trying to get to, which is a lovely thought in uh -huh. a way. Uh -huh. But in terms of practicality, um, I know that you disagree with him on that. And I was wondering if you could tell us why you do and perhaps just talk a little about his model and why you've had to expand it. Well, the reason I disagree is that um, it's fine to say that women are the place that everyone is trying to get to, or the feminine is the place that everyone is trying to get to, but not every woman is in touch with their own feminine. And particularly in this culture where women have been so male-defined, um, most women know the hero's journey very well. They know how to gather their degrees and climb the corporate ladder and uh, find the right spouse and, and have children. But many women haven't given themselves the time really to listen to themselves and find out what it is that they want. What's their journey? And so I felt like um, Campbell's journey didn't go far enough for women. I feel like the most important part of the woman's journey is to heal what I call the mother-daughter split, which is the original separation from the feminine. And what I mean by that is that very often when any of us start our journey um, as adults, we, we have to leave home. But there's, there's very often a real separation or rejection of the mother or of the feminine as we may define as clinging or clawing or devouring or angry or, um, or even if you've had a wonderful relationship with your own mother to to go out on your own, there, there really is a separation, and women, uh, and men too, but what I'm writing about are women, uh, ally themselves with the masculine, whether it's with their father or a teacher or a masculine structure, such as school or a corporation, and they have to follow certain rules. They have to jump through certain hoops to, they have to go through their road of trials they, to reach their boon. And then once they reach their boon, this is usually when I see women in therapy, um, after they've reached their boon. Because I just wanted to interject yeah. you, that's part of what the hero's journey is. If you could just say, there's an oh, initiation, right, right. And the yeah. hero needs to learn something, there's a call, he goes underground. And, uh -huh. and well, I haven't gotten to the underground part okay, yet. All yeah. right. Okay, alright. <laughs> okay. Um, in, in Joseph's uh, model, there's a call, there's a crossing of the threshold, 
there's um, an initiation and going through the road of trials and finding the boon, which in his model uh, is to find the soul. Oh. Um, uh, and I'm using it a little bit differently in terms of the boon. I'm, I'm using that as um, finding success in the outer world. Uh, at, at some point, a person finds that they've made a lot of sacrifices for that success, and the sacrifices that they've made have not served their soul. And so that's when I usually see them, when they reach a, a period of spiritual aridity, uh, dryness, saying, you know, what is all this for? I've mounted my steed, I've climbed the corporate ladder, or I've gotten to the top in, in my career, and something feels off. Something doesn't feel right. See, because I think when you say soul, that implies wholeness. Mm -hmm. So if one is just like addressing these kind of masculine issues of, you know, going out and achieving something, um, this isn't a culture that exactly encourages the feminine and encourages no. being with process. You know, it's product. Product achieves, achieves something, goal. Right. So, you know, there's no way you're going to have a, a, a wholeness if you're just addressing half of what people are. No, and, and a lot of people are getting very sick trying to exactly. be everything for all people. And I think so, women get sick too because they're trying to be everything for other people. Right. It's a toxic condition oh, to yeah. deny yourself. That's one of the biggest wounds for women is trying to please everyone. Yeah. And um, so they get to this point of spiritual aridity and that's when I really find that they start their descent to the goddess as you mentioned before, the, the, the underworld journey or the journey of the belly of the whale. And that is when they really touch into the dark feminine. Mm. Um, they touch their despair, they touch their rage, um, they begin to see that um, a lot of aspects of themselves have nothing to do with who they really are, but they've put on these different roles, just like putting on different clothes, because they've been expected to. So they go through a period of what I call voluntary isolation, where they don't want to be doing what everyone else asks them to do. And they really have to come to terms with, okay, who am I? And, and and what's missing in my life? And that's when I see them starting to yearn for, for feminine values and uh, yearn for a sense of connection, perhaps with other women. I see the healing uh, as a co-created journey that uh, women are mothering each other and nurturing each other. And not only mothering and nurturing women, but they're doing it with men and children too. And so, and again, other women are, are supporting women in, in this journey. What would you consider feminine values? Oh, I've just been writing about that. Um, uh, one of the one of the things I've been writing about is the aspect of creativity in terms of really allowing um, the creative process to birth mm -hmm. and giving yourself enough time and enough patience to sit with the gestation process. I find that one of the most alarming things in our culture that people are expected to produce, produce, produce. Exactly. And if you're not doing something, then you have no value. So it's really one of the feminine qualities that I'd like to develop within myself and encourage other women to develop is the art and the discipline of being. Being is not being lazy. Being is really learning how to listen to self and listen to the earth and listen, as you said before, to the body. So I think that's partly what Campbell was saying to you when he said about being. Right. And I, I love this term, um, spiritual aridity, in the mm -hmm. sense of because you think of... Um, when you think of being inward, there is kind of a darkness or a mm -hmm. moisture to this, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. it is sort of a rejuvenation. And it is like the hardest thing is is to sit with the emptiness of the unknown, to yeah. sit with when you don't know what's going to be happening and you think you're just lazy or a failure or all these things. And, and, all, and your family's telling you that. Everybody's telling right. you that. You know, They're the saying, whole culture you know, is that. Get and, back. You know, let's see you smile again. Yeah, and it, it, and it really is crazy-making because it, it doesn't take time to account the cyclical nature of things is mm -hmm. just this line and um, and and I think it's a real challenge to like um, I, I know you've even done workshops with artists like reconnecting with the artist within mm -hmm. for artists to go through that process too of you know sometimes they feel burned out or mm -hmm. dried up or their creativity is gone and and to sit with that it's it's um, it's very hard it's a real act of courage yes because the outside world is saying well you know you've lost it or um, you're depressed, take some antidepressants <laughs> right, or just exactly. fix yourself. Yeah. Or and we really have to learn how to honor the um, dissent. You know, when you just said um, you're depressed, take some antidepressants, that's not the answer. Yeah. That just um, 
numbs the, yeah. the symptoms underneath, they're still there. And people really have to make it a sacred journey. If you're going to be depressed, you might as well make it a sacred journey. <laughs> right. Or it, Again, that whole thing of wholeness, like it's practically illegal to be mm -hmm. depressed or to have a breakdown or something, whereas it might not be a breakdown, but it's a breakthrough to something right. else. And yeah. to, again, if you're going to have wholeness, there's dark and light. You mm -hmm. know, it's, you know, forget all this, just think positively all the time. Not that that doesn't have its own frame of reference, mm -hmm. but... You know, you're going to be in, in touch with cycles and all kinds of um, natural... That's nature. Right. That's what we're really saying. Right. It's nature. And that's what's so wonderful about women who are creating rituals to honor mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. I, I have a women's group, and we honor the, uh, the equinoxes and the solstices. And when you start to honor those um, cycles in nature, you begin to really become aware of your own cycles, your menstrual cycle, your ups and downs. And... And so when you are in a quiet period, you can honor that and say, okay, that's a time of really listening to the dreams and listening to the insights instead of saying, what's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. um, and when you said before about breakdown, moving to breakthrough, that's, I think that's really important for people to realize that any time that things aren't moving for them, they're not having a breakdown, they're breaking through to another level. And they need to honor that, too. One thing that I think is interesting, for me, in some ways, the word hero is problematic. Mm -hmm. Because if one thinks of these earlier um, partnership or goddess cultures in the Paleolithic and the Neolithic, which our culture is based on mm -hmm. in terms of the arts and the sciences, um, and later they were overthrown by patriarchal cultures who worshipped the hero. But it's hero in a certain definition of... of um, dominator. Dominator, mm -hmm. of, you know, brandishing the sword and, and this glorification of violence. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, this glorification of the individual at the expense of all sense of any kind of community or anything else like that. So I just wanted you to address that word because, mm -hmm. and, you know, you're kind of reclaiming it in another word by saying heroine. But... Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a certain way, it's a tarnished word. It is a tarnished word. Um, I like to think of heroic qualities. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the heroic qualities that I see is the people who are addressing the interconnection of all species. Yes. Because if I address you as an it instead of as a thou, then you yeah. and I are separate. But if, if, if we are interconne interconnected and we're connected with the earth and we're connected with the sea, then we're not going to try to dominate or have power over anything. We realize that we are the sea as well. And we are the mountains and we are the whales that are dying right now up in Valdez. And so a heroic quality for me is, um, is interconnection and compassion and uh, discernment and really tapping into what's truth. Mm. Um, uh, so what I'm trying to do is, is redefine hero or heroine. And I also think, you know, all of those things, uh, and especially for women, is having that compassion, tapping into all those things for themselves. Mm -hmm. Because I know in part of your model is the ability to say no. Mm -hmm. And how good that feels for a woman to say no, here are my boundaries, here are my limits, and for them to address their own needs. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're just as much a part of that, you know, each of us is as part of that living web as anybody else and has kind of the same you know, spiritual constitutional rights, if right. you will, and, and for women to say no and to, to address themselves. Because if they don't, again, it's that like sickening feeling when you say yes when you really mean no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's one of the, my main tasks when I work with women in therapy is to give them permission to say no. Um, I have a little exercise that I use with a lot of clients. They write down saying no in, in different ways and uh. keep them in um, <laughs> index cards so they can pull them out of their pocket. Gee, no, I, I think I'm going to have to think about that. Or, <laughs> or um, you know, I just don't really feel like doing that right now. We're not used to saying that to people. We're supposed to be available for everyone, for everyone else's needs. Well, in the few minutes that we have left, mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, you also... You lead women on vision quests, which I find very fascinating. And, you know, you do have a really deep love of the wilderness and of nature. And this last bit of slides that we're going to be seeing is um, some images that you took of nature. And they're very abstracted, too. And so mm -hmm. I think that our viewers are really going to enjoy that. And, and I really would like to thank you for oh. coming and sharing your work with well, us thank today. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed being here. Okay, so look for The Heroine's Journey by Maureen Murdoch. And let's see these last bit of... Um, artistry by our guest.
To be human is to express the mysteries of the spirit through art. Today we know at the beginning of our culture was the great goddess. Can the return of the goddess now teach us the interconnectedness of all life, restore us to the beauty of the natural world? But most of all, can she give to artists images that can carry us safely into the 21st century and create the future? Amen. Mm -hmm. 